Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let it let us never underestimate the spirit that God has put on the inside of us. You know, we get into trouble when we look at ourselves and what we can do and what we can accomplish. We've got to look at the greater one. Amen. You know what? Hallelujah. Sometimes it's good to just repent and say, Lord, forgive us. We've just had our eyes on ourselves too much instead of on your Godhead, instead of on the throne, instead of on the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard somebody say this week, they said, I'm not, I'm not looking for a voice. I'm looking for a verse. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Because that's what anchors Amen. us. That's what holds Praise us steady. Hallelujah. That the word of God never departs from our heart or from our mouth. Amen. That it's constantly there and holds us steady through every course, every place of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If we're looking to ourselves, we'll fall by the wayside. But we're looking to the one that established this earth. And the word of God holds it in place. Amen. It can hold our, our world in place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Let's get into the Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. And we choose tonight to treasure your word. And then when we approach your word, it's living, it's alive. And your word wants to speak to us, correct us if need be, keep us in alignment. Hallelujah. Bring revelation to us of things that we've maybe not known or, or understood before. A greater revelation. So we just thank you for being the living God to each one of us. We thank you for your word being so real to us that we grab a hold of it and we run with it. We run with the word of God. Praise you, Jesus. And we fight with the word of God. That's why we win. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the word tonight. In Jesus' name, let there be a spirit of revelation. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I pray you have your Bibles ready. Thank you, Lord. We're going to write some things here on the board, so uh, we don't want to go too far away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for uh, that prayer, Pastor Sherry. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We've been talking about securing the family blessing and so this is going to be part two of securing the family blessing. And we said this Sunday that if you are, you find yourself, maybe you're not married, don't have kids, it doesn't matter. You're in the family of God and you are part of the family. And there's no limitation to what God can do to you as a family member of the body of Christ. And I've had people say, you know, like a spiritual father to me or, you know, to my wife, you're like a spiritual mother to me. And there's things that go on in people's lives that are not relegated to what we would call flesh and blood uh, relationship. So uh, don't ever think that you are, uh, you know, this doesn't pertain to you. You're part of the family and secure. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Securing the family blessing is so important. We said uh, Sunday that uh, securing the family blessing is standing on the word and enforcing what God has said. If God said in Genesis 12, 3, that you are a blessing, amen, he said that, you are a blessed, you are blessed rather, excuse me, Genesis 12, 3. It's actually 12, you can put 2 and 3. It says that you're blessed. We are blessed. He said, you're blessed, Abram. And he said, through you, all the families, all the families of the earth. All the families. Of the earth shall be blessed. So if, if if that's the promise of God, you know that we are be blessed. And so uh, if that's what God is saying, then we have to secure that in our life. How do we do that? We do it by standing on it, and and, and by saying, you know, Lord, I'm recalling your word that says in Genesis 12 that through you shall my family be blessed. That through you I will be blessed. And you can put this other scripture along with it, Galatians 3:29. You know, it, it almost sounds like, wow, you teach on this so much. Well, there's so much in it. Hallelujah. Gal Galatians 3.29 says, If you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means that this belongs to us in Christ. 
And if you want further proof of that, he said in, in Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree, verse 14, Galatians 3.14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus our Lord. So in Jesus, this blessing comes on anybody who wants it. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I don't know about you, but this, this, is, this is not religion. This is family blessing. You know, I, people come to me and say, oh, you know, you should join our belief, and this is our belief, and, you know, you can come meditate with us. I go, what are you going to meditate on? And uh, they say, well, uh, you know, we're just going to meditate and empty our hearts and minds and, and let the power of the universe come in and fill it. Fill it with what? They go, well, you know, that beautiful feeling and, and grace and and what, I said, yeah, but it's good. what does it mean? What is the, what is the words? Tell me what it means. You see, with the, with the Word of God, the living Spirit of God has written on our hearts the covenant of Almighty God. This is the Word God will never go back on. If you think you've heard from heaven and you haven't heard about the blessing that was on Abraham, you haven't heard anything. Oh, well, you're being judgmental. No, I'm not. The Word of God will judge that. But let me say this, <laughs> nothing can beat and come against the blessing of God. Balak tried to get uh, uh, <laughs> Balaam to curse Israel, and God wouldn't do it. He said, I cannot reverse what God, I cannot curse what God has blessed. And I'm telling you something, if you're the blessing of God is on you, nobody can curse you. And so... I want to uh, just open up tonight on the blessing or the curse. But what I want to do is uh, minister tonight on choosing the blessing. Choosing the blessing. So how's that different than securing the family blessing and standing on the promise? Well, we go through our days and we do things we don't even think matter. And uh, so that's what I want to talk about tonight. And you'll see it as we unfold it. But uh, securing the blessing... I said, was standing on the word, enforcing what God has said, expecting Him to make the difference. When I stand on God's word, He will make the difference. If I'm standing on the covenant blessing of healing, I am the Lord that healeth thee, Exodus 15, 26. And we know in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2, 24, is the updated scripture on that. With His stripes we are healed. James even, he knew it so well that he said, in a church of over 50,000 people, James said, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them anoint him with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up again. Well, well Pastor Ed, what if they're living in sin? And if he had committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Wow. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. See, some people are always ready to disqualify any blessing of God. Well, you know, the Lord might, want, might not want to do it. Well, He might want to. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and he already told me He does. <laughs> 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray above all things, above all things, that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So we, we are wanting to learn how to enforce what God has said, expecting Him to make the difference. I couldn't heal a bat's eye or a gnat's wing. But the Lord can. And that's who we're looking to. Amen. He rose from the dead. It's declaring the blessing rather than the face. It's de declaring the blessing in the face of the curse. If the curse is showing up. You declare the blessing right in its face. Glory to God. And send him on his way. So that's securing the blessing. Choosing the blessing is making daily choices we may not even think we are making. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, some people have no idea how life works. I don't claim to know everything, but praise God, I know a little bit more than I used to. And what I know is working. So, uh, And it's based on this Bible. So I, I believe we're in good ground. Choosing the blessing. Look what, it, look what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20. Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 and 20. And this is backed up by the book of Romans, the fourth chapter. And we'll, we'll get into that. But uh, Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 and 20 says, I call heaven and earth to witness today against you that I have set before you 
life and death, blessing and cursing. So under life, you have to put the word blessing. And under the word death, you have to put the word cursing. Amen. There's a choice. Life and death, blessing and cursing. Now, if this wasn't hard enough decision to make, God is very helpful. Amen. He said, therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So God is telling us that the choice of life and blessing is a... Life and blessing is a choice. Amen. Death and cursing is a choice. Somebody said, well, it feels like there's a curse on my house. I've heard Christians say that. And what we were trying to bring out Sunday was, you are blessed in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father who are of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, past tense, as a result of the covenant, has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. And so we need to understand that that blessing belongs to us in, in Christ. If you're in Jesus, it's grace that puts you there. God's riches at Christ's expense. Jesus paid it all so we can be blessed. And blessed, the word blessed is not a cute little word that you want to put on your lapel and, and, and you know, just put it in a card and say, blessed. It's, this, is a, this is a gritty word that in the toughest places of life, I bring that word out. Amen. And it works. And it's okay to bless people. Blessings. Bless, bless you. That's okay. Especially if it comes from your heart. Amen. But I don't don't treat it like it's some cute little word that is so fragile that somebody can, you know, we 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 sometimes we think the devil is so high and mighty, so strong and powerful, he's so evil and dirty and nasty that he gets his way no matter what he no, he doesn't. Amen. He does not. The curse uh causeless shall not alight. That's what the Bible said. The curse doesn't come without a cause. You have to invite the curse. Somebody said, well, we've had generational curses. Well, there are. The Bible talks about generational curses. But let me tell you something. You don't have to go back six generations and talk to Uncle Henry and ask him why he caused the curse to come on the family. All you have to do is break the curse in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? The blessing of the Lord will now come on your family. That's what my mom did. She just said, that's it. Starting right now. That, I don't care what anybody says. From this day forward, we're blessed. And, and, and when I got saved and came into this, I, I saw it in Scripture just as plain as day. I, I chose to be blessed. Oh, I have a lot of choices. You know, I could choose a lot of different things. But I'm choosing, according to Deuteronomy 30, 18, 30 19, and 20, life and death, blessing and cursing. I'm going to choose this. Even though sometimes it may be hard, sometimes it may seem difficult, especially when people have made up their mind to curse you to your face and behind your back. And some people have even uh, uh, engaged in your downfall, trying to, trying to undermine everything you're doing. Amen. There's people that do that. When, I remember when Donald Trump got uh, uh, voted in as president, there are people that said within the very hour of his inauguration, they were going to impeach him. They were going to find a way. You can look at it on YouTube. You can look at it on Facebook. And, and you know, uh, you can think what you want, but somebody wanted to, they wanted to impeach him just, just the day he got inaugurated. Well, anybody who says that about Biden is, you know, you need your heart to be transplanted or something. Hallelujah. We, we should, well, I won't go there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but we need a heart change rather than some other change. 
Glory to God. Let, let's just suffice it to say that. We need hearts to be changed. We shouldn't be praying curses on other people. You pray for them and let God handle it. Amen. The Bible says to bless your enemies, to do good to those who despitefully use you. Why? Because God said, I'll vindicate. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And I just want to say to everybody I know in our congregation, but to the body of Christ, don't be cursing the whoever's in office. You pray for them. You turn them over to God. Amen. So uh, we need to be, we, we, I don't know about you, but I want the blessing on my nation. I don't want some curse. Hallelujah. I don't care who's in the, the White House. Amen. I want the blessing on my nation. So uh, the blessing and the curse, write this down if you're keeping score. The blessing and the curse do not mix. <laughs> the blessing and the curse do not mix. You know, some people think that being, you know, balanced is a little bit of the blessing and a little bit of the curse. That makes you a, a balanced Christian. Are you kidding me? That God, God doesn't need the devil and his curse to make your life balanced. God's word will make you balanced. L look what it says. It was just, this is, you know, a little side journey here. Let's just go to the book of Proverbs. I didn't intend to do this, but, but uh, look what it says. Hear you children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake not my law. All right, he's saying, pay attention to the word. Pay attention to what I'm saying. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Now watch. And she shall preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. He's talking about wisdom. He's calling it a her. He said, pay attention to this. Get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. And then he says, wisdom, verse 7, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her. Exalt who? Wisdom. And she will promote you. Wow. Wisdom's going to promote me. He didn't say, I'm going to give you a little bit of the curse and a little bit of the blessing and it all work out and somehow you'll get ahead. No, he said, go after wisdom. Go after understanding. She will exalt. She will promote you. She'll bring you to honor when you do embrace her. She'll give to your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver to you. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying. And the years of your life shall be many. Wow. My goodness. Then he gives us some warnings there. But, but the point I want you to see is that God is teaching us, if we'll walk according to his word and listen to his understanding, listen to his teaching, listen to the instruction. You know, we're, we should be 24-7 students. Forever in the in the in the university of God's Holy Spirit. <laughs> Glory be to God. And it's fun. You ever, you ever study a subject you really liked? And you wanted to go to that class? Well, this is what this is like. So, oh, God wants me to read the Bible. Oh, would you rather be cursed? Have no friends, no, no enjoyment? Be under the thumb of the evil one 24-7? I, when you start loving the Word, start loving instruction, man, it feels good to be corrected in the Word. It feels good that God is instructing you in the way that you should live. So you, God's not mixing the blessing and the curse. It's like water and oil. They don't mix. The oil of the Holy Spirit does not mix with the natural things of this earth uh, in, in the sense that of the curse. That's what I meant by that. In speaking about taming the tongue in James 3, go to, go to James 3. This is very powerful. And I'll show you that these things don't mix. James chapter 3, we're talking about choosing the blessing 
And throughout the day, you're going to have opportunities to choose. And at first, they may not seem, they, sometimes they seem like they're too much. It's like, like one lady, we're, we're teaching on uh, 2 Corinthians 10.4. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And she said, every thought? Every thought? She says, I'm worn out before I even start. I have to pay attention to every thought. I said, you know what? You're paying attention anyway. It's beating you up all day long. And you get tired before you even get out of bed because you've already thought about something bad, something negative, and your day has already started in the wrong way. You know why? Because we aren't taught to think about what we think. We just think it and think everybody, this is what we do. No, everybody doesn't do it. There are some people who really do cast down imaginations. No, Satan, I'm not buying that. No, that's not me. That's not for me. That, that thought's not mine. You may find yourself doing that. We, we, a friend of ours wrote a song called That's Not Mine. And she, she wrote a song about thoughts to come that, that are not for, for her and from her. Every thought you think is not from you and for you. <laughs> so how do I know it's a good thought or not? Well, you find out what the Word says. At first, I didn't know. I could sort of tell. You know, it, it, it's saying steal that guy's $5. I could tell that's not a good thought. Amen. <laughs> hey, I mean, some things are pretty obvious. But if something goes wrong, said, you know, see, nothing's changed. You're serving God and everything's still the same. That's going, if you don't watch it, see, that thought's from the devil. How do you know? Because it comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John 10.10. 10. Write that down. If you don't know that scripture, write it down. It's one of the benchmark scriptures. It's one of those discerning scriptures that tell you if it comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, it's from the enemy. Jesus said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But then he adds this. I've come to give you life, right over here, <laughs> life, and that more abundantly. Wow, I'm taking that. Abundant living. When I first got saved, there was a lot of teaching on abundant living. I love that phrase, abundant living. Amen, I don't like this barely get along stuff. It, takes a, it may take a little while to flip that ship from going from one direction to the other, but it starts, praise God, by you saying, I'm in Christ and I'm blessed. And don't you put a time limit on how long it takes. It, it can happen at the snap of a finger. But if it takes a while, it's a lot better than going the other way and being, being absolutely certain what you're going to get. And that's Murphy's Law. Well, I'm not under Murphy's Law. He didn't die on the cross for me. Jesus died on the cross for me. All right. So James chapter 3. Now watch this. He says in verse 1, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. In many things we offend all. I mean, we've all kind of lived a life where we've hurt other people's feelings, haven't we? We've offended people. And how did we do that? If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect or mature man, able also to bridle his whole body. James is giving us a, a, a clue to what happens every day in the small things of life that some people have no idea is affecting their future. And that is the words that they speak. Amen. Words are seeds. And they bring forth harvest. Look what it says in verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. James is saying, you know, you take that big horse, that horse, you, there's no way a man or a woman can tame a horse with natural power. You don't just walk up to him and be, I'm a horse whisperer, you know, I'm just going to, hi, little horsey, 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 flicka, hi, flicka. So are you old enough to know who flicka is? <laughs> it was a TV show when I, I think it was even before my time. My friend flicka. Uh, or about Mr. Ed. <laughs> a horse is a horse, of course, of course. Uh, the famous Mr. Ed. He could talk, but uh, the thing is, 
you have to have something to put in their mouth that you could train them with. You just, just snap your fingers. Unless you're Jesus, he got on a colt where no man ever sat. I tell you what, he sat on him and he was he was tame. Now that's the miracle power of God right there. Hallelujah. We put also ships, which though they be great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth, or whatever, whatever the, the captain decides it to go, he can just turn about that little small helm, and that great big ship can be turned around. The bigger the ship, the longer the, the turning radius. It takes a little while. But guess what? You can tame a ship with a little small helm. Glory to God. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. I guarantee you, 95, probably 98% of the problems in our life all can be traced back to that little operational thing one inch below your nose. Amen. And he goes on and says this, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. Oh, no. It's my, my uncle defiled me. My aunt defiled me. My, my president defiled me. My nation defiled me. No, it's set on fire by the tongue. Glory be to God. He says, it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Glory to God. Now, if people are telling you, this person's your problem, that person's your problem, the government's your problem, the president's your problem, the, the neighbors are your problem, that group of people's your problem. If you're buying that, you are allowing the curse to come on your life. Because that's not the blessing. Well, what if there's injustices? Well, there's injustices, you, you take the proper steps. But in the meantime, you're telling yourself, thank God I'm, I'm redeemed from the curse. Thank God I'm a, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant woman. And God is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all I ask or think according to the power that works in it. What if Joseph never listened to God? He had all his brothers, 11 brothers against him. But he had one dream from heaven. And this dream showed him who he was going to be. What if Joseph would have listened to his 11 brothers? The whole nation of Israel would not have been redeemed out of uh, famine. He would have been with the father and his house instead of being in Egypt. <laughs> with the power of, of all the food in the world to feed his family. You see, you got to be careful what fight you fight. you got to fight the right fight. you got to fight the fight of faith. If you're not fighting a faith fight, you've lost before you even began. So, uh, out, of the, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. This is what he's saying here. In uh, look at look at uh, even so the tongue is a mem little member verse five boasteth great things behold how great a, a matter a little fire kindleth the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature it is set on fire of hell you know you've ever seen a great big forest fire you realize that that great big forest fire like somebody said <laughs> he said oh, wonder how big the match was that started that fire. You know, I mean, you've got hundreds of acres in a blaze. Yeah, it must have been a big match. No, it's just a little bit of kindling. Could just be somebody who put out their, their uh, campfire, thought it was all the way gone, it wasn't. The wind comes along, blows it up, one, one tree hit, and then all of a sudden, psh, the, whole, the whole thing's on fire. You could trace it back to one little, one little match. And families are in all kinds of chaos and, and, and destruction and, and malice and, and verbal fights. And they, they try to figure out how it all started. Well, guess what? It was somebody's mouth somewhere. 
That's where it started. Every kind of beast of birds and serpents and things of the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is, it is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. There's a saying called, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt me. Uh, if you're a redeemed man, I suppose you can say that. If you're a redeemed woman, I, you, could, you could make that statement. But most people are not, and words absolutely crush their spirit. Therewith bless we God the Father, even the Father, and wherewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Well, that, that is a strong statement right there. We bless God and then we curse men. Some of our senators, congressmen, boast of being, I went to church, and then they get up there in front of the camera and curse the person that they're talking about. Well, you know, let's have some consistency. From the pulpit, too. From every leadership position. Out of the same mouth. Now watch this. We talked about the fact that the blessing and the curse don't mix. All right? Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. If blessing and cursing mix, they wouldn't say anything about this. They say, well, of course it does. You know, God's yin and yang. He uses both. No, He doesn't. God doesn't need the curse of the law to perfect us. God doesn't use the curse of the law to perfect the church. He uses the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the blood of the Lamb, ministry gifts. Hallelujah. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? See, we're not, we're, we're the vine. Jesus, excuse me, Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. We're supposed to bear what the vine bears. What the vine is giving us is what we're supposed to bear. We're not, we're, you know, if you're an apple tree, you don't, you don't produce oranges. That'd be silly. You plant cotton and it came out pomegranates. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I hope there's some health food companies around because I don't know that they would buy them all. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear all berries? Either vines, figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Now, this is so beautiful. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Remember, we were talking about wisdom cries in the street. Exalters, she'll promote you, give you a place of honor, put an ornament of grace upon your head. The meekness of wisdom. The meekness is a tameness. See, when God tames our tongue, we start walking in the meekness of wisdom because we're a tamed man, a tamed woman, a tamed boy, a tamed girl. What does that mean? I'm under the authority of heaven. I've been tamed. Now I can really. Fight the good fight of faith with power and glory and not just be a, a crazy person, lashes out here, lashes out there, has a, a, a moment of a beauty here, but tears down 10 people over there. God wants us under the, the control of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was the perfect man under the control of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He walked with the meekness of wisdom. He said, I don't do anything except I see the Father do it. The blessing and the curse do not mix. In speaking about taming the tongue, James says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. Men, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. God doesn't want the curse and the blessing coming out of us. He wants the blessing. You cannot tame your tongue without giving it to God. You have to give to God this unruly portion of our anatomy and give it to the Lord and say, Lord, I present my body to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is my spiritual service. So not be conformed to this world to be transformed. And part of that is your body. Lord, I give you my tongue. Listen to just a few scriptures here. and You can write these down, the, 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 the references, and, uh, and you can look them up later. But uh, it says... In Psalm 141, verse 3, Psalm 141, verse 3, Set a watch, O Lord, 
before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. You see, if we're not walking in the daily life, asking God to set a watch over our tongue, then our tongue's just going to say anything it wants. We'll react and we don't even, somebody cuts us off on the freeway, you idiot. Don't cur curse somebody. I mean, we all get tempted to do that. We say, Father, I just blessed that my, my friend right there in Jesus' name. Help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. The way you help me. Because I need to drive better too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to be careful what you do. But if you're not setting a watch, if you're not saying, Lord, set a watch over my tongue, that my mouth would not be disobedient, you're not going to be cognizant of it. Psalm, 130, uh, Psalm 39, verse 1. Psalm 39, verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is set before me. Is, while the wicked is before me. While the wicked is before me, I will set a bridle on my tongue. Wow. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. That means the wicked guy or woman or situation is right in front of you. It reminds me of the scripture in Philippians that God says that we could, we could live a, a holy life in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. In the middle of trouble, we can shine as lights, holding forth the word of life. Psalm 17, verses 3 through 5. Psalm 17, verse 3 through 5. You have proven my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and found and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Wow. I made a decision that my mouth will not transgress. You see, when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes in. You see, it's not by our own power. The Holy Spirit is the keeper. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Not by might, but by your spirit. Amen. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. See, the power came from God's word. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in the paths that my footsteps slip not. That's Psalm 17, verses 3 through 5. The psalmist is relying on the words coming from God to keep his mouth uh, sanctified. Psalm 71, verse 8. Psalm 71, verse 8. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your honor all the day. See, instead of just keeping away from bad things, we want to be filled with praise. Let my mouth be filled with your praise all day long. I'm singing all day long, all day long. Keith Moore wrote that. And he got it from this scripture. Let my mouth be filled with your praise all day long. Thank you, Jesus. Micah 7, 5. Trust ye not a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of my mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Keep the doors of my mouth. James 1.26 If any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. He said, man, if you're going to walk with me, you got to bridle your tongue. Amen. I said amen. What did the Bible say about, about Samuel? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. God said about Samuel, anybody got a guess? We'll do a whole dollar on this one. This is not a quarter question. <laughs> I'll have to give it to you. Praise the Lord. You can, you can email us if you know the answer out there. And... Oh, <laughs> he got it. Amen. The Bible says about Samuel that God let none of his words fall to the ground. You get a dollar, Steve. Yeah, come on. We, we're, not playing, we're not playing around here. <laughs> he let none of his words fall to the ground. You know, God wants our words to be operational. What do they say in Star Wars that the, 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 uh, <laughs> the Death Star was not operational or something like <laughs> that? Well, we don't want anything in our life to not be operational. We want to be operational. 
We want the words that we speak to be operational in the name of Jesus. James 3.2, in many of things we offend all, we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a mature or perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. Whatever physical thing, see, Satan comes through the flesh. This is just a simple ABCs of, 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 of being on this earth. Satan comes through the door of the flesh to attack us. God comes through the Spirit. You know, there's, there's three things here, and this is one of the reasons I did this. Nah, it's not as dark as I want it to be. Let's take this circle here, and a circle here, and a circle here. And for, for a, a lack of a better illustration, this is the flesh, this is the soul, and this is the spirit. Flesh, we can put body physical body so you have your spirit you have a soul and you live in a body i don't know if that's as clear as i wanted it to be but so be it this spirit is what is born again when you get born again that's where you're born again is in your spirit satan attacks the body god wants to put his spirit so that your spirit is in control with the holy spirit you and the Holy Spirit are one. Amen. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. Where? In the spirit of a man. Some people believe we are soulish. We, we have a soul and we have a body. But we also have a spirit. The soul of man is the mind, the will, the emotions. Most people live in the soulish realm. They want to, they want to feel everything. They get emotional about things. Those can be beautiful experiences, but they have to be controlled by the Spirit. And the only way you can do that day in and day out is through the Word. The Word and the Spirit working together by the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? And so when we are choosing the blessing, what we mean by this is when thoughts come, where do the thoughts come? They come to the soul. Basically, you're receiving it through your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. You hear something that makes you upset. Take it to God. Some people have knee-jerk reactions. They just, you know, it's like the, the, the doctor hits your knee and your, your foot. Well, of course, it's a natural reaction. Well, the people, when people speak to them, they have a natural reaction. They just react. You know, you, you need to think. You need to, you need to take that to God. And let the filter be the blood of Jesus, the Word of God, the covenant of God, the blessing of the Lord. Are you getting it now? See, when, the, when, the, when the, you have the, the, uh, the blessing of the Lord, the covenant of the Lord, the covenant of blessing, when this becomes your filter, now, praise God, it's almost impossible for Satan to do anything to you. You know, the Bible said if it were possible, they could deceive the very elect. The very elect are not going to be deceived. Why? Because it's not possible. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Well, Pastor Ed, some people could be deceived. I know Christians. Well, there's believers and there's make-believers. If You, you might be a make-believer just because you, I've said this a, a hundred times, and just because you sleep in the garage doesn't make you a car. It's because you go to church, doesn't make you a Christian. See, when trouble comes, it reveals what's on the inside. Trouble does not create bad things. Trouble reveals. And the mature Christian says, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I look to you. How do you know that? Look at Paul and Silas in jail. They were in jail for preaching the gospel. They could have been, you know, as soon as we got here, we're going to write our senator. We're going to write him a letter. This is horrible that we're being persecuted. The whole church is being persecuted. <laughs> they said, Lord, we're just going to worship you right here. We're, <laughs> we're be we just got beaten for our faith. All we did was say the name of Jesus and they beat us. But suddenly there came a sound from heaven and shook that place. And they're, they're very, what they were incarcerated just fell off of them. They could have booked and just left. But they stayed there. 
and they won the jailer to the Lord. We're put on this earth to be, a, to be salt and light, to be a witness. And yeah, it is. It's difficult. Some, some, some days is more difficult than others. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's because it's a little hard. But you have to remember something. The Bible said the way of the transgressor is hard. We may have hard moments. Paul called them light afflictions. I don't know, but I'm going to go Paul. I'm going to go with Paul. I'm not going to go with my feelings. If Paul called them light afflictions, I said, I, I remember reading that one time. But these light afflictions. He talked about all the junk that happened to him. He was left for dead three times, beaten. He's cast out and, and, and people lied about him. So on and so forth. And he said, these light afflictions work for us. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. I said, Lord, if he has light afflictions, mine must be like a super light. I got really light afflictions. <laughs> Compared to him, I said, Lord, forgive me. Because sometimes I do that. I think of my own self and I feel sorry for myself. You know, we all do it. But the more that we worship the Lord and, and meditate on His Word, we start realizing, hey, this is the filter it has to go through. The blessing of the Lord. 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 A, a man or woman that's blessed can go through the most difficult situations and come out better. Come out stronger. Because our afflictions work for us. We go, what Satan meant for evil, God can turn around for good. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. I believe that. Hallelujah. And, and, and we live in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. I, I, I never thought we'd say that about the United States, but it's, it's happening right, right in our midst. But guess what? We can turn it around. We have... The, 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 the beautiful blessing of God on our life to turn things around and cause the blessing to be seen and known and received and walked in. So a wise man who's endued with knowledge has the meekness of wisdom to allow the taming of heaven to work in his or her life. That's what I want you to see tonight. And that's why we can make the right choices. We can choose the blessing throughout the day. Glory to God. I'm going to do that. You're going to do that. We're going to pray right now in the name of Jesus that, that the entrance of God's Word has brought light to us. It takes sight to see light. God's opening our eyes to see the blessing and to walk in the light of it. Lord, I thank You for making us so sensitive. Amen to the Spirit of God, sensitive to the blessing of the Lord, that God, you would have us not uh, be blinded in any way, shape, or form and walk under a curse. And right now, we apply the blessing to our mind, to our body, to our soul, to our finances, to our social situation, to at work, within our family. Lord, we are the blessed of the Lord. And we thank you for the blessing of the Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, that we are not under the curse in any way, shape, or form. Lord, we set a guard over our mouth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Set a watch over my tongue, Lord, that I would not be disobedient. And Lord, I'll be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And you'll have glory as you fill my temple and have your way in my life. Lord, we shall see the blessing of the Lord in our life. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now just lift your hands and love your Lord. Just love your King. Love your Master. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, sweetheart. Let's sing a song and we'll, we'll close up together. You know, while we're in this beautiful spirit of glory, let's just receive. You know, we've been praying this and I, I believe it every service. You know, if there's something in your body at all, let's believe God right now. Father, we thank you for the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We thank You for the delivering power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank You that You cause redemption to come to our bodies. Glory, glory, glory. That we walk in divine health. Glory to God. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord, we drive evil spirits away from us in any way, shape, or form. In any way, shape, or form over our families. And we thank You, Lord, for the divine provision of heaven affecting a healing and a cure whatever ails our bodies in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank You for divine wisdom, divine favor, and, and divine praise God, anointing over every single life that's hearing me right now. We thank You for it, Lord. Divine wisdom, divine anointing, glory be to God, and divine favor. We walk in the light of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I was going to get the guitar, but we don't need it. We'll, we'll sing this song. I'm surprising her. So <laughs> I know that I know that I know I'm free from the curse of the law. Poverty, sickness, and sin. I know that I'm free from it all. I know that I know that I know I'm free from the curse of the law. Poverty, sickness, and sin. I know that I'm free from it all. The entrance of your word gives light. It causes my faith to grow tall. So I know that I know that I know. I know that I'm free from it all. One more time. I know that I know that I know. I'm free from the curse of the law. Poverty, sickness, and sin. I know that I'm free from it all. The entrance of your word gives light. It causes my faith to grow tall. So I know that I know that I know. I'm free from the curse of the law. I'm free from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. <laughs> David Ingalls wrote that. Not really my style of music, but you know what? Anything that puts God's word in my heart, I'm going to sing it. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to embrace it and live in it. Praise the Lord. You got anything else you want to add, Thank sweetheart? You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It makes you want to jump in the word, doesn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Flooded. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you know, you, we Lord. can be flooded with God's word. That's right. And I'm, I'm looking for those tsunamis. Amen. Those tsunami experiences. That's right. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. It's not, it's not that hard and it's not that far beyond us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just one scripture at a time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, we love you. We appreciate you. Be blessed. Get in the Word. Tell somebody you love them. Call somebody on the phone and, and just pray the love of God on their life. And uh, be a blessing wherever you go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're dismissed. <laughs>